Neat Nation, welcome back to the Droopy Whiskey Show, where this week I'm not tasting whiskey. I apologize in advance. But we're hitting something whiskey adjacent that I think a lot of people are relatively curious about. I assume that because I'm relatively curious about it. I'm spirit curious. Um, and this spirit, as I mentioned, is whiskey adjacent spirits, I guess. Um, we're talking about cognac. Here's a cheap one. And we're pitting this cognac, this cheap A cognac, against this expensive A Armagnac. Now, what's the difference between cognac and Armagnac? What Armagnac? What's the deal with these two spirits? I'm going to get into this a little bit. Um, I was gifted both of these bottles over the last, I don't know, this one I've had for quite some time. This one I've had for about six months. Um, and I want to taste them. And I thought you might like to see me react to them. It's been a while since I hit this cognac. <laughs> um, you know, it didn't really strike my fancy initially. But then I was gifted this 1997 vintage of a La Encantada Armagnac. Domaine La Franche. La Fresh. I don't know French stuff. 1997. Cask strength. 49.6% alcohol by volume. Age 23 years. In a wet cellar? It says cellar, and it checks the box wet. So I assume it was a moist cellar. <laughs> Everything I've heard about Len Cantata has been great. People seem to really dig it. Um, we'll see. You know, we'll see. I'm going to taste this base cognac, talk about what cognac is, and then talk about Armagnac, what it is, as I try and get this open. There's no, like, pull switch on here. So, I mean, I'm going to try and pull this, I guess, but it looks so pretty. I don't know how to get this open. We'll get there. First, cognac. What is cognac? Well, cognac's a region in France. Um, you know, the French people like wine. They make wine. They do a pretty good job doing that. So what do they do when they got too much wine? Well, they distill it. Um, cognac has to come from the cognac region. It's made of certain varieties, certain varieties of grapes. Generally go in here. Don't remember what those are. But... It's distilled by a pot still. Generally comes off the, uh, the still pretty high proof, 140 proof before being barreled, often diluted. Uh, lighter in flavor, supposedly, than Armagnac, based on my reading, the literature, a.k.a. Wikipedia. I got through college. I got through, let's just say that way. Big Wikipedia guy. The nose on this is light. And not harsh, but not exactly inviting. It's fruity. Like, I get kind of white, grapey notes. Um, one thing on this, when you're shopping for cognac, it has different uh, distinctions here. This is Chafonte. I assume that's how you pronounce it. Who knows? Uh, but you'll see the VSOP, the VO. Um, I think there's, like, very special. I think that's the bottom bottom tier one and that's like baby baby uh cognac the vsop is four years old supposedly and then the xo is supposed to be 10 10 years and then there's like a napoleon tier that's six years this one's four years and it smells like heck of fruity scotch but light fruits <sighs> It's hard for me, like, the, the flavors in cognac, I'm not, as a bourbon guy, I'm not super used to. Uh, like, a touch of fruit leather, white grape juice, little hairspray, uh, fields of light flowers, kind of musty, though. Musty flowers, grapes, hairspray, yeah. That family of, of aromas. Kind of a chewy... Chewy tactile, a little juicy. Finish is not great, almost grainy, which there's no grain in it. It's grapes, but it's sort of that young distillate vibe. Color on this is not super impressive. Proof level, not super impressive, 80 proof. So if it goes in the barrel at 140 proof and comes in the bottle at 80 proof, well, that's not great. That's not great. I don't know if it goes into the barrel at 140 proof, but I know it comes off the still. So massive dilution levels up in here. It's inoffensive. You know, I could see if you're wanting to look distinguished and sip something, you can probably stomach this. 
the finish is is really not great. Uh, I mentioned this is cheap. This is like thirty dollars. So you know the eighty proof doesn't really help. The four years old doesn't really help. But the thirty dollar price point probably doesn't help either compared to this guy, which is I don't know two hundred or something. It's completely different. As a bourbon guy, this is not my jam. Like, there's a reason that I've had it forever and never really drank it. It's just so light, and I've had scotches with way more profile and better finishes. Like, I, the finish on this is, like, dust and white pepper. It's kind of mouth-drying, too. It's really promising up front, but the longer it kind of hangs out in your mouth, the longer you wish it didn't. Like, <sighs> Okay. All right, uh, so that, yeah, it is it is what it is. Moving over to Armagnac. Armagnac is also a region in France. I'm going to need gonna need a knife here. I'm going to try and pull on this and see what it does, but I hate to mess up this beautiful wax. Yeah, that did nothing. It just ruined the aesthetic. I just, I'm a boob. Um, Armagnac is a region in France. They also distill grapes from their region, and then they barrel age that. Um, they distill on a column still, though, generally, not pot still. Pot still, cognac, column still, armagnac. And then they distill to a lower proof. Is that good? Yeah, we know that that's generally good. Lower barrel entry proof equals positive flavor vibes. When people describe the taste profile differences between... Armagnac and cognac, they would say Armagnac is the more rich, like more um, viscous, big tactile. That's, I mean, that's what I'm about. It's not as well known as cognac. Most of us would know, oh yeah, I've heard of cognac. We've heard of uh, the you know, big brands in cognac like Remy Martin, um, Hennessy, then one other one that I've forgotten. But Armagnac is a little bit more... Um, of a niche product, maybe maybe a connoisseur's product. And I'm hopeful that I will love this because people who I respect love this, so I would also hope to love it, but I don't know, I just I don't I don't know. And and by the looks of things it's gonna take me the better part of six years to get into this bottle. I gotta get a knife. One minute. Knife. Uh, I was getting nervous doing this on camera. Oh, that, that worked perfect. Perfect. It's like I knew what I was doing. Got it right up in there. Bottle pop. Get the, let's get the mic in here. Let's get that audio quality. Oh, oh yes. Oh yes. Do it to me. Oh, wow. Okay, so first, bottle pop quality. 10 out of 10. The aromas wafting out of this are desserty. They are enticing. I'm I'm pretty jacked to try this. <sighs> so La Cantata is not a distillery. Uh, they they're a sorcerer, and this is actually a barrel pick from the sorcerer of Armagnacs. And that's about as much as I know. I'm not an Armagnac specialist. I'm just here to tell you the difference between this crappy cognac and this. Maybe not as crappy Armagnac. As you see, though, this is my first taste. So, cheers. <sighs> oh my gosh. Wow. Oh my gosh. It's, it's oaky, which I love that. And it is sweet and funky and wow. Just a, a friggin' journey, dude. Holy smokes. Okay, so it's raisins, but then it's like Buffalo Tracy bourbon, like cherry and sweet oak, like chocolate and uh, like German chocolate, some coconut and caramely. I mean, I can sniff this for days. There is this funky uh, library book, but it's 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 sort of resting underneath all these other sweet notes, so I'm I'm okay with it. Like it just adds a layer. There's something else going on. Oh, cola. Big cola note. Yeah, that's what it is. So yeah, the nose is a journey. It is remarkable. I just... 
I really don't I don't know what to say other than I can't wait to taste it. The color is fantastic too. I mean it looks old and it looks undiluted, looks robust. Even it's less than a hundred proof, but it's cask strength. Cask strength. Cheers, y'all. It actually packs um, packs a, a bit of heat. Packs a little bit of heat above that 100 proof point. If you were like, Drew, how many proofs is this? I'd be like, more than 100. 110 maybe. But my, my nose. So the grapiness that was so prevalent in the cognac is just slightly here. This... Definitely gets more to the raisins, prunes, oak is there. It's a little drying. Um, it's got an earthy quality too. Uh, you know that wood gets a little dank, but it's got a really mondo sweetness in the molasses, brown sugar. Uh, I mean, cola I think is a real apt descriptor. Even the the retro mouthful. Uh, is like after you've sipped a Coca-Cola. You know that kind of squeaky teeth sensation you get when you've crushed some some Coke? Coca-Cola, to clarify. That's kind of the, the aftermouth sensation. <laughs> Oaky afterbirth. The mouthfeel, too. It, initially, it's like this rush of syrupy sweetness. But it almost gets effervescent. Like, it almost feels carbonated. I have no idea why that is. This is just a really, like, I, I just don't have the mental framework to kind of process this whiskey based on my American whiskey experience. If cherry shows up, it's, it's dry cherry. And the oak is very prevalent. Like, if you like a woody whiskey, you might like this. It's, if anything, a little bit over-oaked. Now, I'm okay with a really oaky whiskey, and it's got enough other, like, fruity spicy notes too maybe a touch of cinnamon and clove like uh, i know some people don't like clove i'm okay with clove in the whiskey so it's spicy it's sweet it's oaky and funky this is hecka complex i think that coconut's in there too german chocolate cake uh on top of charred wood that is the descriptor for this. I see why people love this. I very much enjoy it. I'm going to have to sit on it for a while. Like I'm going to have to pour myself another one, maybe tomorrow, and process it even on a virgin palate. Really weird coming off to, after the cognac. Like, barely comparable. Partially because, you know, 20 years difference in the barrel, uh, 20 proof points, a couple hundred miles in France. France ain't that big. I don't know. I don't know how far apart they are, but probably not more than a few hundred miles. But I think you should check this out. Like, if you love bourbon and you're like, gosh, I mean, another... I don't want to overpay again for Buffalo Trace limited releases. Well, I mean, like I said, this is a couple hundred bucks. I think you can get these on shelves in different areas. And there are a couple other Armagnac brands that I've seen on shelves at high-end whiskey and uh, wine stores that just sit there. So you can go get like a product that's like a high-end Armagnac um, that doesn't cost you an arm and a leg. Way less than scotch, way less than high-end bourbons. So I I encourage you to do so. I'm actually likely to do that. Like I kind of want to plumb the depths here of this Armagnac thing and figure out what's up. Let's get a couple more. Maybe line them up, do a blind. Best Armagnac ever, according to me, who knows nothing about Armagnac. But where we're at right now, encouraged in this area still not feeling this guy in any way whatsoever hope you guys enjoyed that video thanks for watching thanks for humoring me i hope this was educational for you if you've never explored cognac or armagnac it's educational for me and i think just like i'm just cracking the door open a little bit here but check back in next monday we'll get back to bourbon i promise next monday back to bourbon this thursday live Droopy Whiskey Show live Thursday nights, 8 o'clock Central Time here. Okay? We'll see you then. In the meantime, you can follow me on Instagram if you want, at Droopy Whiskey. But even if you don't, we'll see you next week. 
till then, y'all just keep it neat.